What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here with Ross Uglum, who you've seen here before, but it's been a while since we've had Ross on the channel. Ross, thanks so much for taking some time and talking mock draft. That's right. It's mock draft time because the Packers season is over. It is. It's Monday. Um, earliest, you know, and that's what we're talking about, you know, is mock draft Monday, the earliest we've ever done it this year. Um, and I, you know, hand up, I'd lost the faith. Uh, is it two and five or two and six? And we're just like, <laughs> I saw you were getting the mock drafts yeah. going real early oh, this year. <laughs> I think, you know, because I, so we have like a template at 24 7 Sports is still the host that they're, they're pro. Mm-hmm. Their pro uh, football, really their pro sports coverage has kind of died. They've moved into more of a college space, but that's still who hosts Packer Report. So, you know, and we have no problem with them. They're they're actually great to us. But, um, you know, they have like this template and then you just click clone and then your old mock draft thing is back. Oh, and nice. then you just, you know, redo. So you don't have to like start <laughs> from scratch every time. And so I went back to clone an old mock draft Monday and it's like, Man, I never got past like 9.0 or 10.0. <laughs> we have mock draft Monday 11.0 up like today. That's <laughs> and, awesome. And it's just because <laughs> you know people like it, people read it, and again, I had lost faith. They were two and five. I was looking forward, and and if you read the first one, you'll see that I was looking forward to a different quarterback. But... Yeah, you were. But okay, there's a lot to unpack here. A lot to unpack. <laughs> well, we're no um, longer in that place. <laughs> no, we are not. It's a very, The draft needs are very yeah. different for the Green Bay Packers than maybe oh. back in late October. Uh, but okay, so for anyone watching who isn't familiar with your editions of Mock Draft Monday, the genesis of it, like how it came about and what you do, uh, why don't you lay it out for the folks here on the Cheesehead TV YouTube channel so they have an idea? I'm about 94% sure it actually started on Cheesehead TV. I think it's one of the... I thought so, uh, but I wasn't yeah, sure. It's, right? one of, it's one of the kind of um, staples, if you will, including the Packers big board, which is where I rank. Like, So I've been working with Fanspeak for a couple of years where mm. you can kind of... Now, PFF is great for their mock draft sim is awesome. I truly love it. Like, yeah. it's it's clean. It's It's simple. I think the trades are realistic, getting offered trades that are realistic. And the slider is like you can kind of control the AI, right? Yeah. As far as what teams are drafting for and the trades being realistic and things like that. It's cool, yeah. But I found like my mock is always the same. Why is that? Well, even though I'll have my big board up, like their players still show up in the order that basically one, one and a half guys. And and by the way, Trevor Sikkim is awesome. I love Trey. Yeah. Um, Good dude. Grinds super hard. Like these are opinions based and they're not all um consensus for example like i love um cooper bb i don't think he's gonna be a green bay packer (laughs) just because i don't think he has any flexibility but like i see cooper bb and i'm just like oh um 10 years starting nfl guard so if that's worth a top second round pick to you or a super late one if you just have a need at guard like he's right there at like 30 or 40 for me right in that range of you know if the Number one, you know, the, the first couple teams that need a quarterback, take that quarterback, right. bring in Cooper BB, he'll protect him. Hmm. Trev has him at like 98. So, and and by the way, consensus on him is closer to 30 to 50. I may be a little high, hmm. but like Cooper BB, as you read it now, is, um, you know, consensus in that like second round area. So you go to PFF and like the first eight mocks I did had Cooper BB in round four. And then I'm finally just like, stop doing this. Like, what, <laughs> You it's know, always the same outcome. Wait right. a second. So I, I like to jump around and, and get. So what I'm saying is, fan speak. Right now, I'm at like 200. Because guys, these, these guys, the audacity of these people to go back to school is just driving me insane. I've had to just how dare they wipe people <laughs> off my board. Um, so right. we're down to like 255 players. I like to have 260 or 270 before I send it off to fan speak. Right. And then that, then for me or for what I used to do for Cheesehead and what still gets done for for Pack Report is. I'll take now I'll just basically take quarterbacks off or I'll move them, you know, super far down to where you won't, you know, um, take them. Uh, there'll be a, a spot and there's two, two kind of positions I want to talk about as we get deeper into the show where mm-hmm. I'm going to on the Packers big board have pretty high rankings for like my top 10 wide receivers because all oh, that'd be really fun or interesting and kind of make them undefendable. Right. But then you have to pass the like Bo Melton level of, mm. And when I'm getting to wide receiver 12, 13, 14 on my board, am I 100% sure that I would roster them over Bo Melton? And if I'm not, I'm not drafting them. Right. You have to make the team. Um, the year that, that Tampa took Tyler Johnson, and I can't remember, 
um, you know, like Denzel Mims was maybe that class. I can't remember, but I remember Tyler Johnson because he was like the last guy on my list that I thought would actually make the Packers. And then they just didn't take a receiver and people went nuts <laughs> got up there in front of everybody and just said, after we got to a per- certain point at wide receiver, we did not feel that any of the rest of the guys would make the team because they had MVS at the time and, right. and um, Malik Taylor and, you know, the guys that they didn't think the kind of bottom of the draft guys would go We're over to beat out. Yeah. Right. So I'll take corners, which I think they need desperately, and bump mm-hmm. them up. I'll take safeties, which I think they need desperately, and bump them up. Um, especially if they end up moving on from Bakhtiari. Tackles are going to move up. Big time. But, right. but positions that they don't need, quarterbacks are going to be way down. Non-elite wide receivers are going to be way down. Non-elite defensive tackles are going to be way down because to be the fifth defensive tackle, you have to be more promising than Colby Wooden, a guy that they they really like. Okay, so there's there's a Colby Wooden Mendoza line too that, <laughs> that the defensive linemen right. have to like. So I, I I did that the the Packers big board mock draft Monday. This is a long way of saying what mock draft Monday is is I will do um, a based on kind of where the Packers are picking. And sometimes it's, okay, well, they did a trade, which is, that's the case this year. They did a trade and now they've got this. Or a lot of times um, compensatory picks would 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 be a big factor. Like, oh, well, this year they have two fours and a five. So we're going to do five round mocks because they have eight picks in those five rounds. In those rounds, yeah. Right, yeah. so that's, and, and I've cut it off at four. Why four? Well, it's pretty darn simple now. Um, yes, the Packers have made some pretty cool picks in round six and seven. Uh, I, I think that's to be commended. That's awesome. Like John Runyon Jr. Uh, people have their issues with JRJ, but for a six round pick, he's been truly excellent. Un- I mean, he's yeah. been a starter for four. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. Yep. So um, we're not going to do round six and seven. I'm just not. And then they don't have a pick in round five because they sent a five and Rasul for a three. Yep. For the three. Um, right. However, and Hey, as our good friend justice says, you know, the, the draft is four rounds. After that, you're just throwing darts. Although so, the Packers, I'm down with that. I, I, and I have stretched it to five be, just because Green Bay has been so so good, right? Good in round <laughs> right. five. It's crazy. Know, it's crazy. Got Davion Wicks, uh, Slayton, Aaron Jones is a round five pick. Like, yes, sir. They're, they're good at that. But um, this year it's four. They sent a five and uh, Rasul for a three. So now they have one, two, two, three, three. Four, four, and that second four is probably for the Alan Lazard contract with the Jets. So shout out Joe Douglas. So we've been doing, <laughs> we've been doing um, the seven picks in the first four rounds. So I'll do the seven picks that they have in the first four rounds. Then I'll take five, six big time, big you know, big time national mocks, CBS Sports, ESPN, mm-hmm. Pro Football Network, uh, Draft Wire. Um, Pro Football Focus, uh, ESPN, obviously, if they are like the insider stuff, if McShay or or Kuiper comes out with something, right? Um, Daniel Jeremiah, Dane Brugler, like we we'll find the ones from the big guys, uh, and then I'll always, always, and and by the way, folks, I don't care if you're Cheesehead TV, if you are Lombardi Avenue, if you are Acme <laughs> Packing Company, I don't care. I always the second to last thing that I do is a Packers multi round mock by a Packers content creator. I'm. I'm here for you guys. Like that's, I want to, you know, boost your signal in any way that I can. And, and so that second to last spot is always for, um, like I said, Lombardi Avenue, she said TV, whomever it is. And then the last spot's a, fa- a fan mock. We, we love to, um, I'll break down, you know, kind of, uh, my favorite one that, that ends up in my Twitter replies, uh, what I like about it, what I don't. And, and that's what I do. I, I, what I like, what I would do, what I wouldn't have done. And, and also I'll sprinkle in, things that the packages aren't going to do you right know, i'll point out when and and it's not like i don't expect because i don't right i don't have a clue i i, I know two teams and and it's just because of who we sort of partner with on this packer report draft guide like mm. i kind of know what the chiefs like to do which by the way is just rooted in packers john dorsey dorsey stuff right <laughs> off yep and i know what the, the packers like to do I don't know the draft tendencies and requirements and athletic thresholds of the Jacksonville Jaguars, nor do I know it for the I Vikings. Am, nor do shocked, I know it. Sir. Right. So, so like, I can't expect that from Dane Brugler. I can't expect right. that from all McShay, the national guys. You know, I mean, you know, I, I think guys at that level do incredible work, but it's uh, impossible 100%. to get right. down and drill down on 32 teams like that. exactly. Yeah, like, why would, 
you know, why, why would my, my, my buddy from the draft wire know <laughs> that like Goody won't take a wide receiver who weighs less than 190? Right. You just won't, you know, what, what, why would he know that they just won't take a corner who's not 5'11? They, they like, it's unrealistic to expect them, you know, to know all these things. And, and, um, that's kind of, and I, I try to be nice about it, but I try to also just point on out the internet. That, yeah. You're crazy. I, I try. I to, will say, I do, I do want to jump in here real quick to say ahead, go ahead. this is what I love about this idea and why I w- wanted you to be on the channel to talk about it yeah. because I've been watching you do this now for a couple of years. And I do love that like earlier in the season when you were talking about it and people were like, not now, like not think about it, but it is a great exercise for just learning about everybody in the draft process, not just the prospects, but people who are evaluating them, what they're thinking and the ideas that come up from those types of conversations. I absolutely love it. And I've watched it grow on your end, like kind of organically. Right. And it's really really interesting and i think a really cool way of again being nice and having a decent kind of conversation around what people are thinking when it comes to the draft that isn't oh so and so is never going to be there <laughs> like what you hear every year and it's the most ridiculous stuff and it's like to get any kind of content that isn't that i i'm i'm all in and i love it yeah and, and we just like i said you know i try to and, and we talked about a couple three examples um prior to to getting on on, mm-hmm. on the recording here where for years, you know, Let's some national, uh, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll start with this, uh, no, I'll, I'll do the lead up thing. So real quick, you know, national guys for years would mock a receiver to green Bay in round one and go like time to get Aaron Rodgers a weapon. They'll finally do it. Like, you know, it's like, no, they won't. You want to know why? Cause their hit rate in round two and three is disgusting. And, and honestly, frankly, even later than that, but you right. know, whatever, they don't view it as a super premium position. They just don't. They they're they're you know that thirty five to sixty is like their sweet spot. Yeah, um, has been. You know, and and uh, the second one and until I was proven very wrong was was uh, off ball linebacker for years. Oh yeah, people begged. I'll, I'll never forget the the just ridiculousness that occurred when Green Bay took Kenny Clark over Miles Jack as they were college teammate. And Miles I was Jack. burning to the ground myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it was there. And it's just like they're not gonna do it. They're not gonna do it. They're not gonna do it. And then they trade Devontae Adams and they have two ones and they announced the Quay Walker pick. And I just sort of stared at the screen and I'm like, what do you mean, Quay Walker? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people were there. Yeah, and, I think a lot of people had that reaction. And you know, you can have whatever pins you want on on the Quay thing. I just it's not something that's done. So what's on the screen now? Um is something that I've been fighting for the last couple of years. I mentioned Daniel Falele to you. Uh, the, the Ravens right. ended up taking him. I think he was like 6'9", 380. He is the most uh he, he he's the most insane example or like the super example of right. this. And I, I call him super XL offensive lineman. I it's a term that I'm relatively certain that none of them are offended by. Uh, <laughs> but like the 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 real, real, real big ones, uh, as far as tackles are concerned. Um, guys that are are just truly, truly enormous. And in this class, that'd be like um, Fuaga from Oregon State is three thirty four. Latham from from Alabama is three thirty five. Mims uh, from Georgia is three forty. Um, let's see if there's another one. Guyton is three thirty at six at six foot seven three thirty. Um, Goncalves from Pitt six foot six three thirty. And and th- they're good. There are good football players that. They exist. Trent Williams right. is one of them. Trent yep. Williams is enormous. Yep. Um, however, if you look at this table that I made, and by the way, two weeks ago when there was no mock draft Monday, it's because apparently this table crashed our software at Packer <laughs> Report twice, and I just got so angry that I just <laughs> got up and walked away from the computer. Uh, but I, I did this on Google Docs. So what this is right here, and this is an example where I'll see a, a national guy, and as respectfully as I can, just say like, um, Guys, Fuaga uh, from Oregon State. I can't remember who whose it was, and now I feel dumb. But but somebody just today released their first mock draft and and gave um, the Oregon State tackle Taliesi Fuaga to, and, and if I'm butchering that, I do apologize to the Packers. Right. Six foot six, three thirty four. Um, okay, if he's going to play guard, and if you think the Packers are taking a guard at twenty five, twenty five, right? I, I I don't know if I can go there with you. So. This is anybody that they've taken in the first four rounds at tackle 
that they have actually played as a preferred tackle. And before you guys even start, I know Treader played tackle. I know that Josh Sitton played tackle. I know TJ Lang played tackle. I know. I'm talking about guys that preferred they preferred spent- tackle. Yes. Yeah. That they, you know, they threw Alan Barbary out there on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> what a pull. Uh, but I'm serious. You know, like, right. They threw, they yeah, threw I totally they get it. Briggs out there on purpose. Yep. Okay. Um, these are tackles that they have wanted to play tackle. Right. And on the left, you can see that the only guy that has been six foot seven is John Michaels in 1996. The heaviest guy has been Chad Clifton at 320, meaning that, or excuse me, there's Sherrod at 321. There's Sherrod at 321. So in the last 13 years, they haven't done anybody over 321 pounds. And if you actually look at like what I'm looking at here, I'm seeing a mean weight of 309. Roughly, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna do like I'm not just gonna do the quick math, but I see a median height here for sure of six foot five. Yep. And we you know, I think some people get annoyed of how obsessed they are with versatility. You know, I, I do, I think and I understand that, but yeah. damn if they haven't done a pretty damn good job of cultivating yeah. and, that and talent, so, you know. You know, I would say the hit rate here is impressive. Verbo is a good player. Clifton, if he's not, should be a Packers Hall of Famer. Definitely. Um, Bulaga, Packers Hall of Famer. Sherrod was nobody's fault. Bakhtiari might be a regular Hall of Famer. Might be an actual um, Hall of Famer, exactly. You know, and, and Zach Tom is on his way. And, and of course, you have the misses with uh, Spriggs and, and Barber, although he was a mid-fourth-round pick. That's kind of what you expect there. Right. And John Michaels, I think, also got hurt and was kind of nobody's fault, if I remember John Michaels' yep. career. Agreed. Um, so, yeah, they're, they have a type. Okay, and so when you mock J.C. Latham at six foot six, three forty to Green Bay, I'm going to be nice about it, but I'm going to point out, like, hey guys, this is a pretty unlikely thing for the Packers to do. Could they take a tackle that they could maybe you know play somewhere else? Yeah, they could. But let me introduce you to Jordan Morgan from Arizona, a Pac-12 tackle at six foot six, three twenty that moves. Uh, Troy Fautanu from or uh, from Washington, who I just think is actually just going to be a Packer, either him, him or the next guy. If they aren't on the team, I'm going to be surprised. And that's Graham Barton, um, a tackle from Duke, six foot five, three fourteen, can play multiple positions. Those are the guys to pay attention to. And it's not because they're necessarily better players or even guys that I have, you know, ranked higher than Mims or Latham or Fuaga. Mm. But it's just like, what are the Packers actually? What are the Packers looking at? Yeah, what, what, exactly. you know, and, and do I think that they would have had, had things continue to go terribly? Um, let's let's say Green Bay finishes uh, seven and ten instead of nine and eight. Right. But Love has a pretty similar end of the season where it's like, no, he is the guy. Um, but Joe Barry just cratered. Like, yeah, like mm-hmm. like they lose the Carolina game and then they're out of it and they just crater and lose to Minnesota and Chicago. Well, then they're seven and ten, not not nine and eight. They didn't, you know, we didn't have the fun run that we just had, right? And maybe in their position to take Joe Alt, they're gonna pass on Joe Alt because he's six eight, probably not. But but that doesn't mean that he fits, you know, what they've done. And once you get past the super blue chippers like Alt, you get back into okay, what do they actually do? You know what 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 are they actually historically, you know, kind of pointing at? Why does this matter? Because Ron Wolf taught Ted Thompson, who taught Brian Gutekunst, and whether you like it or not, they're all still there. I know it sounds kind of like incestuous, but but it's a way of working that has served them there. extremely well over the course of the last three decades or what what have you. And what I find interesting about the alt thing, right? If they had say cratered, right, and they're there, I'm fascinated because the Packers, you know, keep winning and putting themselves at the lower parts of the draft each and every year, almost. So when it is that rare moment where they're up, like last year, say, when they got uh, Lucas Van Ness at 13, you know, that's just such a rare moment for the Packers. I do think, like, more often than not, this is the exact approach. But I am always kind of fascinated if they were to have a blue chip prospect there who maybe doesn't fit some of their thresholds that they've proven out over the course of many decades. How tough is it in that room to make the call to say, okay, we're going to break the norm here we're going to go outside of our normal kind of shell and we believe that his talent is such that well it's okay to make an exception yeah i think that would have been definitely something to pay attention to one guy um 
that that I think really, excuse me, that yes, kind of um, would have would have stressed that was mm. uh, they loved and and I know it's going to kill people. They loved Odell Beckham Jr., oh, who I is that. who yeah. is not your normal six foot one, two hundred and five pound, not a Packers type at no, all. But they loved him, yep. and 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 again, people thought he was like slot only. And of course, he went twelfth overall. I mean, he went way higher than a normal slot receiver or whatever would go. Mm-hmm. But that's definitely one example of guys of a, a guy um, that I I know that they loved. You know, I know that they yeah. uh, were not necessarily going to break tendencies because he was probably pretty close. He's he's thick, yeah, he's still almost two hundred pounds. Um, but some of the times too, and, and it's it's I don't know, funny is the right word. It was interesting. They they've had some of their biggest misses when they've tried to do yes. like specific things. Yep. And and kind of gotten away from from their tendencies. Like, um, I think they definitely went into the 2020 draft saying we are going to find this fullback H back guy uh for Matt's offense. And that was Deguara. And he was not what they normally do. Yep. Um and and it it kind of hasn't worked out. Uh, another huge example of that was, and and now you know, um, due to his success, I'm I'm happy f- for him certainly. But like, Nico Collins uh, has oh, been man. awesome. It's and, so funny to watch Nico like explode, right? And Packers fans won't give it up. They won't give it up, <laughs> which I understand. But it's like we've got this great set of talent now, you know. And but people and, are uh, people are loving it. And I no get doubt. like, I get the, you know, the like butterfly effect, effect I guess, right. is, is what I would right. say. Is, yeah. um, well, then you, you needed receivers because you didn't take Nico Collins. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't burn two twos to move up to take Christian, you know. Right. And by the way, like, here's my my bobblehead. Christian. There you go. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> that would have been obviously very sad for me. Um, mm-hmm. But. It's true. I mean, they wouldn't have needed. They would not have needed to do that. They're similar style receivers. You look at Nico Collins, his relative athletic score up in the nine sevens. I mean, he he was their guy, like to a T. Big Ten program. You know where they just took Rashawn Gary from, Upper Midwest gets it. Can play in the cold. Not a like Nico Collins just screamed Green Bay Packer right through and through, and you know, allegedly the quarterback wanted a slot receiver. And so they went and got him a slot receiver. Now I'm not going to pin everything on Rogers, but I mean, <laughs> Amari Rogers happened. However it happened. I don't mm-hmm. care if Aaron Rodgers banged the table for him because he was related to Randall Cobb. I'm going to throw an allegedly in there, mm-hmm. <laughs> but th- he was, he did not fit what they do at, no. at all. Amari did not. And the fact that they, yeah. yeah, the fact that they traded up was always so weird, right? Like I know Brian liked him, but, it was not their prototypical type. No. That's it wasn't. why it was and, always and it, so surprising. But the exact same person could say neither was Jaden Reed. Now, 100%. Exactly. There are, right? there are some allegations that, like, Green Bay had about eight tenths of a second less on his 40 on their hand time. Right. And that kind of shifts some things, but still um, not the crazy agility numbers. And, and people get obsessed with 40 time. Green Bay is actually kind of obsessed with agility numbers. Like, they, they're guys, they're, you go look at like Greg Jennings three cone and his short shuttle. That's what they're looking for. They want to know if you can move and create space. Right. And, and obviously right. Christian is like one of the foremost athletic wide receivers ever. And that was not just based on running straight <laughs> real fast. That was based right. on being six, four two ten, and still being able to get some wiggle. drill and short shuttle. And stuff I still like remember that. that when, after he was drafted and people, talking about how he was another MVS and I'm like just watch him in space against <laughs> any defender and you can dispel that notion immediately I mean he, right. that's a kid who's got that speed but yeah he has way more uh, after the catch in my mind anyway yeah and, and and two I mean just at the top of the route I mean the, the ability right. to actually separate which is what why Reed was so interesting not that he can't separate but just like his short shuttle numbers his vertical which is not just the ability to jump but it it really portends your explosive ability your right. guys with a high vertical also have quick acceleration because that's how they anatomically physiologically <laughs> put together right uh, they, you know they have burst um and and so his change of direction was kind of eh. 
and his obviously his height and weight from their perspective historically were also kind of eh. But he's a dude, and so absolutely, um, dude, yeah. And and I hope and this will kind of move to something that you've interacted with me on Twitter, and I don't mean to lead your show, but that I want to talk a little bit. No, about please it. do, please do. That's why and, you're here, um, Nickel. Oh yeah, I, buddy. I, so I I was on, online as I am unfortunately far too often, <laughs> and. I I actually kind of am am sort of wanting at, at the at the time I was like yep that's fine go get a three for Rasul it's cool right this team needed Rasul yeah they did and yeah and, they did you know it's however however thirty one thirty six attempts thirty six attempts by Brock Purdy mm-hmm. thirty one of them were targeted at interior pass defenders for the Packers. That means they were throwing at Keyshawn. They were throwing at the safeties. They were throwing at the, linebacker. the linebackers. They threw at Valentine and Jair five times. They saw so, that. Ta- they saw that Tampa tape. So if Sewell, you know, if Sewell is playing the Valentine spot, mm-hmm. you're gonna make a difference nope. in that specific game. Nope. And 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 again, I would rather have Rasul Douglas for like seven and a half million or whatever the hell he's making next year, right? Than pick ninety eight. I, I would. Because I think this team has a chance to be very good next year, and corner is like one of the top needs. Yep. Uh, but it wasn't going to change, you know, what their problems were. And and I I love Keyshawn Nixon. I would love to have Keyshawn Nixon make about half as much as he was making this year, and come back as the returner and break glass of encaged of emergency. That's it, corner. That, and that's exactly it. I mean, the but, need to kind of boost that floor on defense is so so so, like very very real and i like Keyshawn absolutely as a returner but man they need to improve at nickel they need to improve at nickel that That has to happen and they just haven't cared i mean they they (laughs) basically they brought and what's insane to me is this is a franchise that watched Charles Woodson win Defensive Player of the Year from the nickel. From the nickel, from the star <laughs> position. Thank you. His versatility. That's why I always thought they were going to put Jair there. And I understand, like, the diminutive stature, et cetera. But, man, that kid, before he got the shoulder injury, could yeah. totally do that. Oh, you he know? would have been an awesome nickel. That's what bugged me. And, in, in look, like, I screw stuff up, right? I'm not, you know, i be working in the NFL if I got everything right. I'd be making a lot of money. Even then, you right. Trust yeah. Me. <laughs> but so I screwed up the Josh Jackson thing. Hand up, I did. Like I, I, I loved him. Loved him. Freaked yeah, out yeah. when they took him. But I still think what they did was dumb. I, I think Jair was the obvious inside guy, and yep. having totally agree Josh Jackson, who some On the thought, perimeter, right? Yeah, Josh Jackson, who some thought, like to me, Josh Jackson is Sewell, honestly, yep. and the, like some people that borderline free safety from Josh Jackson. And you're going to make a guy with that change of direction play nickel. Anyway, yeah, um, that never made sense, but you just look at what they've done the last, however many years they've been contending a very, very, very near retirement. Tremont Williams, <laughs> who, who gave way to Chandon Sullivan, who Yikes. you found from the Eagles practice, which whatever. Yeah. They also found Sewell on the practice squad. I'm not necessarily. Yeah. No, I feel you. Okay. But then Chandon this Sullivan, is the level of investment, right? Right. Chandon Sullivan gave up big play after big play. Yep. Only to give way to Keyshawn, who, who also gives up big, big play. Right. So that's and and okay. So if that means one of two things, and one of my favorite guys is Terrian Arnold, um, average height. He's from Alabama, six mm. foot. Not not one of these six two like Kevin King types. Not one of these five ten types either. Has a ton of. Uh, slot experience. People are going to love the idea of Cooper DeGene from Iowa in, in the slot. Um, I'm, I'm here for that too. Uh, I think he could be <laughs> super Micah Hyde in the sense that uh-huh. I think Co- Cooper could be an awesome free safety or a very good nickel. I think Cooper is much more athletic than Micah. And by the way, I would take Micah Hyde back so fast. Like yesterday, yeah. Right. But <laughs> right. Treat it. And, 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 if, and what I'm getting to is if you're going to break your tendencies for Amari Rogers and Jaden Reed because they play inside, Maybe look at a five nine and a half corner who's thick and can play. Maybe look at a five ten corner who can actually play the slot position, who's twitched up, because that's who they're going against. Okay, they're going right. against short two way goes in space. You need someone exactly. who can handle that, and, and they haven't course. had someone who can handle that since Woodson was in town. Maybe Micah. 
A hundred percent. And and Micah just did it because he was smarter than everybody else. Exactly. He, was he knew out. route combos. He knew sets. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And, and so that's a spot where, to me, I would say treat it as its own position and, and start treating it like a starter. Well, start- especially, yeah, I was just going to say, especially in a league where you're in nickel 75% of the time, how is that not an area where you invest right. Especially and, in the draft. And I'm fine, too. I would have been fine if their answer to it was, oh, well, we'll play big nickel. Yeah. Like, sure. Except you have no safeties. Zero. Savage is gone. I mean, not necessarily gone, but not under contract. Yeah, no. He's, is not I think contract. he'll be gone. Yeah. They've um, got to start over there completely, I think. And, I mean, I would bring Darnell back just – I mean, all this is cost-dependent. It, right. it really is. Of course. Just someone. Um, and, of course, a lot of this depends on – whom st- the the defensive play call coordinator is, is yes you know, yeah that's a big deal but um anyway the, you know your 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 three huge snap and safeties this year were Darnell Savage, Rudy Ford and Jonathan Owens and none of them are under contract so you can't sell me that you're going to play big nickel when you need to find two starters somehow <laughs> before next season anyway much less three right. guys that can play um and yeah Jair would have been great now he's a 5'10" 190 pound corner with bad shoulders he play outside i yeah. i'm i'm that's you know, fine. Um, but I would, like you said, I mean, like we've, like we have said, he needs to be, tr- that position needs to be treated as a starting position. If, and I'm just going to, this is great, super great radio. I'll just tell you where uh, Keyshawn Nixon ranked in terms of just snaps. It, it won't mm-hmm. take very long here. Just, no, no, no. Uh, let's see. Green it's the internet, man. We got all the time in the world. It's all <laughs> good. Defense, and I'm just going to order the spreadsheet by total snaps. And there is Keyshawn Nixon at number two. Oh. Quay Walker played 973 snaps. Keyshawn Nixon played 937 snaps. And then you go down to Jonathan Owens at 927. And what in Jesus' name were they doing playing Kenny Clark 913 snaps? Anyway. <laughs> the Kenny conversation we'll have yeah. down the road. But, but the Nixon thing, man. If your nickel is your number two snapper, yep. he it can't be. Oh, well, it's another thing for my kick returner to do. No, it isn't. No. It's no, not. Sir. Yeah. And and I've Jaden Reed's great. People talk about, you know, it could have taken Brian Branch instead of Jaden Reed or Luke Musgrave. I'm I'm very fine with I wanted Brian I Branch. Know. I I loved Brian Branch, but yeah. I was over the moon when yes. they ended up getting Reed and Musgrave. So take good I am players, fine. they took good players. Exactly. Take, take good players, they took good players. What what you and I are both saying and I think in agreement with is time to time to fix the safety room and time to start treating the interior corner spot as if it is real. And frankly, the exterior corner situation, I'm not passing anything up because of Carrington Valentine. I love CV. Love him, but I'm with you. But I'm, I'm not. And I'm also not passing anything up because of what I think I might or might not get from Eric Stokes. Yep. That, oh, that, no. no. That might Stokes, end up Stokes going to prove a lot yet. I and, mean, come on. And Stokes is more of like kind of a nobody's fault. Yeah. I don't think they took him any stinks. I think they took him and he got super hurt and yep. it, it just s happens, right? Yep. <laughs> that's no, a, doubt, no right doubt. But that's yeah. still an issue, right? The yeah. fa- the fact that you're still creating a void opposite Jair on the perimeter that you've got to fill with somebody who's trending in the right way. I mean, Valentine for for everything he did this season, I still don't know much about him. You know what I mean? Like I saw him get physical at times, and I certainly saw that he's not afraid to chat after a, a play is over. Talking. But, you know, but it's not like they they played so much zone when he was out there. And it's to your point in the San Francisco game, people knew how to attack the Packers. It was go over the middle of the field, attack either holes in the zone or some really, really tough guys in coverage as far as you're able to take advantage of them. So there was no need to go after Valentine. So I just don't. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they prioritize that as they should. But. It all comes down to value, who's on the board when they pick, and things like that. I mean, I'm sure they've got these ideas, but it's so hard when it like happens in real time, and you're like, okay, X and Y and Z are available. Okay, well, who fits the best, and who's got the best upside? Those are all things that we talk about from now until April, and then everything we thought was going to transpire turns on a head and is completely different. That's what I love <laughs> about the draft. Let's uh, let's get into your second page here. If we got yes, 
Yes. You got, you got your mock draft up here. Yeah, so I just thought it'd be fun to do my draft uh, here, and I'll just kind of talk you through my thought process. Right. Um, I'm going to go just for time's sake, even though a lot of the time when I have, uh, ever since Green Bay's kind of been slotted into 25, I've liked to trade down. It's because I kind of have these corners in my head um, that I'd sort of be pulling the ejector seat if, if, ne- if none of them were <laughs> available. Right. And if anybody's willing to throw me an extra pick to move down and kind of take somebody I would have taken in that, that spot anyway. Not anyway, right. Um, but I, I've gotten to the point now after watching a little bit more, uh, I'm, I'm willing to throw Cameron Kinchins and Tyler Newbin in with those five corners that I really like meaning that there are seven players plus like if something insane happens at the wide receiver position, I'm, I'm willing to sort of chat about, Oh, that. come on. And I, I'm and, and that's <laughs> 25. Tough, that's a tough thing. Wide receiver. Come on. Now. Okay. Well, uh, and by the way, that means three guys oh, yeah, and yeah, none yeah, of them yeah. are going to be there. Exactly. And I, I know how much everybody, including myself has crapped on, not going to be their guy. Right. Um, because but these I'm, guys are not going to be there. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my, my threshold is Harrison Jr. Never going to happen. Never. And then neighbors in a Dunze. And I think neighbors in a Dunze would like, I don't even know if the like Laramie Tunsil bong mask situation <laughs> would could drop him down. You know point. what I mean? So yep. like, that's, that's about the, as quote unquote insane as I would be willing to get. So right. uh, no trades, a uh, four round mock, and I'll just kind of briefly go through my, uh, you know, thought process as yeah, we absolutely roll through here. Okay, um, this one is inter- again Latham, like not a guy. Trice is super, super interesting to me, uh, like a six four, six three, not super long, but like two seventy, the kind of guy that they love. Like Gary is big. Uh, Van Ness is big, big. and, yeah, and exactly. try hard guy. He's a Pac 12 guy. Um, very much, you know, kind of guy that they have, have, have liked in the past, but just looking at the corners that are sort of available here. Um, I like Tampa quite a bit, but rake straw is in my group. And okay. as much as I love Kinchins and Newbin, um, I I'm, I'm, I'm with rake straw. And the reason is, Rakestraw tackles. My God, oh, Kevin, does he tackle? Take and, him. And <laughs> like he, anybody uh, with warm bodies, a pulse, and a tackler, I want him on this defense. And I think so he could. Not I think he could play. And just here's my little peek at the trade. See, mm-hmm. I don't know what the Lions are offering me to trade down to thirty. I would so fast your head would spin. But I'm <laughs> not going to do it. Nope. We're make the selection. If, if it's me, I'm mm-hmm. looking at picking at twenty five, and the Lions are at thirty. And I would be super thrilled with Trice, Rakestraw, Kinchins, or Newbin at 30. And the odds of all four of them being gone are non-existent. But we're not. We're going to stick to the rules. I'm going to go Rakestraw. Um, and I'm going to probably start him off inside next. Like if, there we if, go. Uh, in my, I'm going to put him at nickel. In my world, Jair and, and Valentine, again, pending. Mm-hmm. No free agent additions, which, by the way, Kendall Fuller. I am, I am putting... Man, I am. Putting, I, why are you talking like this? <laughs> I am putting my my the the candle circle on Twitter <laughs> for around Kendall Fuller for one edition. Mm. If I could make one mid level, he's not at the top. People no, keep, he's not going to get. Yeah, I people get keep uh, sign Winfield Jr. Yeah, that's uh, not okay. I mean, yes. If <laughs> right, if we're on Madden and we can turn the salary cap off, yeah. that'd be great. Can you sign Jordan Love to five years, fifty? Because if you can't, <laughs> you know, right. okay. So Rakestraw. Why Rakestraw over the others? Simply because he tackles. Yeah. Yep. Because Mostly. he's the last of my group. So my group right now, yeah. as it sits, is Dejean. Nate Wiggins, who's actually my my cornerback one, and I have seen some simulations where he ends up with the Packers. I don't think it's insane, right? Um, but Nate Wiggins is is from Clemson. Um, I, I like both Alabama quarters corners. Excuse me, quite a bit. Uh, Cooper DeGene from Iowa, I like quite a bit, and then um, uh, Rakestra, and nice. and the Rakestra thing is just because he has that versatility and he tackles, and okay. and I'm I'm willing to I'm go all in. Him. Yep. <laughs> Um, this is really interesting. Leggett is not is not like my favorite guy in the world. Uh, Xavier Leggett, he is not probably what 
what I would do. Um, TJ Tampa is just staring at me. The Packers have gone corner, corner before. And, and frankly, I would play, if you, you look quick at TJ here, um, you know, he's 6'2", 200. He is your Kevin King style. Oh, Not Kevin King, but right. he is all day. The mold. Russell Douglas is a reasonable reasonable yeah. comp for TJ Tampa. We're, we're not going to do that. Uh, I'm also not going to um, go the wide receiver route. Kalen Bullock is interesting. Packers fans are going to get real mad because Kalen Bullock does not tackle. Oh, boy. He, coverage? I mean, that middle of the field stuff isn't happening anymore with Kalen Bullock, but if they're going to play quarters and expect him to come down in the alley, it's going to look a lot like when Darnell Savage comes down. Yeah, in the alley. that's yeah, no, no more of that. What so about my, my boy guy. Byron Murphy there? I love him. Uh, I know, I absolutely love him. I've seen that. Here's my problem, with Byron Murphy. Mm-hmm. Give me his teammate. Byron yeah, Murphy. I so far, every time I mention him, people say this. Okay, <laughs> I like Byron. I I love Byron Murphy too. Six one three zero eight. I don't need it. I yeah, don't. No, not, I hear you. And here's hear why. You. Because at this point, despite his relative decent size, Devontae mm-hmm. Wyatt is not a run defender. He's just not. He, he, he is not defending the run right now. Carl Brooks is a pass rush specialist and a damn fancy one. Good one, right? And But at this point, no. And Colby Wooden's 270. <laughs> yeah, he's not He's not the beef in your line. So in any way, I am not form. taking a six-foot-one defensive tackle and making him my sixth sixth D tackle in that room or kicking out Colby for Byron Murphy. And I love Byron Murphy. I do, but here's my guy right here. Give it to me. Chris Jenkins, Colin's nephew, Chris's son. I've read about this kid. Now, okay. So sell me on him. Cause I don't, I have not watched him play much. I've obviously okay. seen when they're on national television. Everyone so about, six, three, three Oh five plays a number of different positions along the line, along the line. If you look, um, Jesse Minter's running that in vogue Baltimore Ravens mm. multiple front defense. Right. He is the best run defending defensive lineman in the class, period. And he's not 380 like my dog Tavondre, <laughs> who I love. Right. right. He he's a normal defensive lineman size, you know, six foot three, 305, 310, something like that. He right. could play a little bit of three for you. He could play a little bit of five for you. I don't think he'd die at at, at the one tech. Um, I, he can play, but he is the best run defending defensive lineman and there is pass rush upside. i they call him the machine or some ridiculous. <laughs> we'll give him a better name. It's play. all right. <laughs> but there's some, there are, there's plenty of discussion right. about his, uh, athletic prowess. He's going to be, in my opinion, the mutant. It's the mutant. That, there you go. His name is the mutant. They, I see. I like the mutant. The mutant's better than the machine. I'll give him that. I'll tell you this. He's going to end up with that green RAS, and then he's going to end up on the Packers RAS shortlist, which is something else that I started at Cheesehead TV, which is like 81.3% of Green Bay's draft picks in the last five years have come from guys who test at least this well. That's here's right. a list of 100 guys. Or here's the list of 60 guys. They're probably going to take eight of them. <laughs> you know, here's and they always do. Right. Yep. So Chris Jenkins is going to be the one guy. And, and I'm going to get, I'm going to catch, you know what, for this. I, <laughs> buddy, watch Xavier Worthy. So unnecessary. I keep telling you. I so keep telling people keep saying this to me. Yes. So unnecessary. <laughs> but the way that he wins deep, mm-hmm. um, he's thinner than they like. I mean, he he's a, he's a thin guy. But him and Christian and Musgrave and Reed on the same field would be ridiculous. But Chris Jenkins. There you go. I love it. Oh, I, I mean, and by uh, the, the run defense. By the way, that was based a lot on the fact that my two guys were gone. Jordan Morgan, my two Pac-12 tackles that I love mm. that I think. So those two guys that I mentioned earlier in the show, Jordan Morgan from Arizona, Troy Fautano from Washington, and then I'll throw Graham Barton from Duke in there as well. I think if any of those three are there when the, at the Jets pick, mm. it's over. That's just mm. what they're going to do. Move it. However, like it. they were not there. Um, this is a layup for me uh, because I already took a defensive tackle, so I'm not going to take sweat. Um, Jatavion Sanders would be super fun. He would take the DeGuara role and then just make it like use chick plus. Oh, now he's, we're talking. He's 6'4". Six, Six three and a half, um, twenty years old. So it's like, it's like be like drafting Holy Kenny cow. Clark again. Yeah, Damn. but he dominated the Big Twelve. Very very exciting. I just think 
them taking another tight end in the second round. Yeah, I'd be, be I'd be surprised. The thing that um, was so disappointing with Deguara too, towards the end, especially in that game against San Francisco, is what a tell he has become. Because they're not putting him, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're not putting him out there for anything other than, okay, go cut off that backside end. 100%. And that is it. That is why he's there. Um, I, I got to tell you, I have a firm round one grade on Chop Robinson. So as, as much as people... Talk about value. Yeah, I just I have a firm one on him. I'm I'm interested to see how he tests. Uh build the whole plane out of edge rushers. Fine. I'll build the whole <laughs> plane out of edge rushers. Let's I don't go. care. Let's he's, go. He's unique. Well, especially and Enig Bari. I mean, he's out yeah. now, right? I mean, right. you gotta think at least a year, probably. So and, and, yeah, and build it up. Finally, and I've always been in love with these guys like Brian Burns, Spindley. Right. Um, Harold Landry was always sort of a more go around you than go through you. They've got all the growth, do the go through yous. Okay. I mean, that's Rashawn yeah. Gary and Lucas Van Ness are trying to go through your face. Yep. Chop 6'3, 250. Chop looks like Clay Matthews. And that would give them a different weapon. And I'm just like, in my brain, by having five top 100 picks, one of them can be not stake. Right. This is my. This is my steak Oscar. This is the crab <laughs> dip on top of my steak is Chop Robinson. Now your top two rushers next year are Gary and Preston, and your second two are Chop Robinson and Lucas Van Ness, and that is a really scary thing. And and that this is my 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 butter. This is my sizzle. This is what I, you know, my extra <laughs> thing. I love it. I mean, you need it, though, especially you if you want to keep them he- you know, fresh and rolling in bodies throughout the game. I'm I'm all in on this idea. Just as easy. We're going back to Michigan. Blake Corum. Love it. Love him. Love him. I um, had him in my mock, and yeah. people actually like the pick, which never happens. But, <laughs> yes, I love this kid. Now, that's somebody I have seen uh, a little bit more of, obviously, because he handles the football. But, man, yes, give sure. me more of that. And talk about having him rotating in for Aaron Jones. Yes. Hello. Yep. Yes, please. Okay. Um. I'm going to just make real quick. We're going to sort by safeties here. <laughs> we need Jaden safeties. Hicks. Jaden Hicks. I, I like Baron just fine. Jaden Hicks. Mm-hmm. Um, Brugler had Jaden Hicks to the Packers at the Jets pick, which is, really? a little, is a little out of pocket, I think. But Hicks is really interesting. Um, 6'3", 212. Some people actually think he might end up as a dime linebacker. I think he can survive. Um, playing safety, especially if you're going to do like a single high system where uh, he could kind of be the Amos, I think. Does he tackle? Uh, he does. Yeah, the tweeners always scare me. The tweeners he, always make me think they can't tackle. They're not no, he, enough. He, he does tackle. Um, versatile. And as far as these guys here, mm-hmm. uh, Jalen Simpson's really interesting to me. PFF doesn't think a ton of Jalen Simpson, but Jalen Simpson to me is a slot corner. And maybe okay. why I'm a little bit obsessed with him, but Jalen uh, <laughs> Hicks here for sure. Nice. So our big thing, you know, things we haven't accomplished yet mm-hmm. is offensive line. So that's that's. Definitely- you know they'll do that on day three. We know yep. they'll do that in like rounds five, six, and seven. That's just kind of my set it and forget it at this point as a Packers fan. I mean, sure. if they do end up taking a tackle or something, I'm not going to be surprised. But yeah, I think. Uh, oh, perfect. Done. Easy. There we go. Yep. Speak of pack, the devil. Pack 12, <laughs> pack 12, 6, 4, 3, 11. I, I don't even need, I don't need to know anymore. <laughs> that's it. Sign yep, up. That's it. Done. <laughs> and then uh, let me just, ooh, I love Bo Melton's brother. Oh, is that who that is? Yep. Oh, come on. I mean, that is the thing, though. Like, you do, yeah. if you do take somebody at wide receiver, it's like you've got to be able to beat out Bo Melton. And who the hell is going to beat out Bo Melton? from like day three on. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, And I'm going to go Eichenberg. I think he is, as much as this will make Packers fans annoyed, I just think he's that, you know. Is that Ohio he, State kid? Yeah. It's, like that's anytime you mention any Ohio State draft prospect going to the Packers, you get hate mail. I, I know yeah. I've known that for years. But I just think he is Blake Martinez. And as much as people hated Blake Martinez. He was productive. I'm good with. Especially with at that point in the draft. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, and I Hell think yeah. honestly might end up being sort of a long-term starter. So here you are. This will end up in mock draft Monday today. Uh, really pleased with how this one went. Um, no, you know, real serious offensive line help, but La Mea is, is a guy that, that I like just fine. Um, and again, six, four, three, 11 can play a guard spot, can play a tackle. 
Uh, if you you don't want to throw him in a direct competition with Sean Ryan at right guard, that's fine. There are a couple centers that I like, you know, in this class, but it, then it's like, okay, we're, we're definitely moving on from Myers. And I, I understand some of the desire to move on from Myers, but they seem um, to love him though. I mean, yeah. I understand it on outside the building, but yeah. inside they, they sure seem committed to him. And, and I tell you what, he, he is improving and Agreed. he was a high school five-star tackle. He is sort of still learning that position. He's also tall for a He's center. Tall as hell, yeah. Um, and I, I definitely think if you improve that that spot next to him, where Jenkins is awesome, but like the yeah. right guard, you know, Agreed. if Sean Ryan can take a step into especially in pass pro, yeah, you know, definitely. and then you you maybe throw some right guard competition in there. I'm done with that, but yeah, I'm I'm thrilled with this rake stride play. Um, inside Hicks is, I think is going to start day one somewhere, uh, in the secondary. I have no problem with that. Chop Robinson, as I mentioned, is my stake, uh, or is my sizzle, excuse me. Right, right. Um, he's kind of my quote unquote extra guy. Uh, Chris Jenkins immediately upgrades the run defense in a huge way. Corum is whatever him. Patrick Taylor replaced That's a question, him. question for you there yeah. on Corum, because this is something I like hesitated when I was doing my own mock and I, I did end up getting him and I, but I got him on day two. Are do you think they're not burned by, but do you think they'll still potentially pull the trigger on whoever, like not necessarily Corum, but a running back on day two, like they did with AJ Dillon? Probably didn't get, you know, I'm pretty sure they projected him to emerge as a frontline starter. That didn't happen. Do you think that makes them gun shy at all? I mean, because they did find Aaron Jones in the fifth round. Yeah, you know? probably. There's the whole conversation around running back value, especially in the draft. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that's definitely a part of the conversation. I, I think it, where I took him, which is the, 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 you know, third round late, like the high eighties. Yeah. I don't know that that's going to be a, a huge sticking point for them. You that know, makes sense. Um, yeah. I would be surprised though, because I've seen people that really, really like Trey Benson uh, take him in round two. That's a running back out of Florida state. I, I like Trey just fine as well, but, I've I've also seen, um, and I think the the number one back in this class is Jonathan Brooks from Texas, right? Uh, but he tore his ACL kind of late ish in the season, and I've seen some people take him for the Packers. And I I think anytime you have a chance to take a top back in the class, who I think had he stayed healthy, might have had late round one, early round two buzz, and you you take him, you know, at fifty seven, like where where I took Chop, where they took Dylan basically, who I think they right. took at sixty. Yep. Maybe, you know, you could, but I, I am not and have not been taking any running backs at 25, 41 or 57 Yeah, I, I'm because of what you said. And, yeah. and it usually is quorum for me in these late third round area, because um, for me, he's RB two. And I don't know that, that that's going to move. And I, and there are people, plenty of people that prefer Trey Benson there prefer a number of different guys. Uh, there's an Audrey Katisme from uh, Notre Dame that's getting some RB2 love. For me, it's Corum. And if it's not Corum or Brooks, then yeah, I'm looking at 125 or 135. Uh, one guy that I really like, and this would not probably be even where you'd comp like an Aaron Jones or even have that expectation. <laughs> I've always wanted forever um, the Packers to give Aaron Rodgers Darren Sproles. Uh, no, dude, this is something I used to talk about with Greg Bedard. This okay. is how long this has been going on. Sure. Like the fact that the Packers seemingly have an aversion to that type of, not only back, but that type of player. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and they don't I would five, love seven. That. That's not, that's not my point. Right. But I just go back to even the Super Bowl season and what Brandon Jackson became Thank and you. the big check down plays that he made in the Super Bowl. Yep. Um, Moving you know, the sticks, like, keeping you on schedule. 100%. Absolutely. It's not that Aaron Jones like, can't do that. Obviously, um, the arrow route against Chicago in week one, the right. under against uh, the, the little slant under the, the slot fade in, in week uh, eight, seven. But all of that said, he's still not that quick titch, twitch type of no, guy. No. And and the guy all. the guy that, that and his brother was a very, very good slot wide receiver for Texas, and Jordan Shipley, Will mm. Shipley from Clemson, Yes. Catches the hell out of it. I like him a lot. And he's a mid round guy that I would be very interested in. And and just in general, I get that the third down or like the third back on the roster plays a ton of teams. I do. I understand that. I, I really do. 
Um, and so Green Bay has kind of the expectations for their number one and number two to really be able to actually carry it, like be an effective carrier of the football. Jones and Dylan have to both be able to carry it. And so if you're going to go with that, we're like, my, my, my number one and my number two have to be able to be effective in our basic stuff. Then my number three needs to be able to play teams. And so that's, I do understand why they have sort of not been super involved in the pass catching number three, because if that player is not, that guy's not flying down on coverage, right? If that player is not a good enough or a big enough athlete to help you on kick cover on punt cover on kick return, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Why do we have them around? Well, the answer is for the offense. <laughs> you know, move the you, chains, keep yeah. you out of the sticks, keep you on schedule. And 100%. there's guys that I like plenty too um, that could be a part of, you know, not the, 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 the just the pass catching. Like I think Bucky right. Irving could be, could be great. I like uh, Ray Davis from Kentucky quite a bit. Uh, Gopher fans, or excuse me, Badger fans. Ooh, that was a cardinal sin. Uh, you we'll, know, edit, we'll edit that out. Yeah, right. Badger fans. <laughs> You know, if you if they're gonna let Dylan walk, you can just get another Dylan and Braylon Allen, and 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 I almost had him in my mock. Yeah, he, uh, he he showed up like right at the my last pick in the fourth, but I I I went. And, and way, he but... I think is a guy you could get in round four, which he's so funny. Yeah. I don't want to get too deep into the weeds, but like just the way that I'll get Badger fan. Trust me, I'm a Badger fan, and I've literally had <laughs> both the trust me, I'm a Badger. Trust me, I'm a Badger fan. He's a bum. He won't do anything in the league. <laughs> and trust me, I'm a Badger fan. He's right. not getting out of round two. Exactly. I've had both the trust. Well, me. It is officially draft season. Oh, <laughs> um, Marks from it. Mississippi State is another guy that I really like that has kind of that feature back size uh, that I think could could do well uh, if you needed you know a guy to take 15, 16, 18 carries and is in enough. Uh, in the the past game, et cetera. But he's another guy where, you know, PFF has him at 150. Well, Green Bay has picked 125 and 135, you know. And and so, um, no, but I, I would guess, you know, if you just put a gun to my head and said, will Green Bay take a running back sometime oh. in round one through four? I, I think yes. I think it's a real I, good chance. I, I, I do think yes. Yeah, I agree. Ross, this has been phenomenal. I love chat and draft with you each and every year, but this this is awesome. I love Mock Draft Monday. Thanks so much for coming on and talking about it. People can check it out. We'll put a link in the description of this video. And oh, let's do this again. I'd love to sure. kind of keep chatting pretty yeah. much uh, throughout the offseason leading up to the draft. Um, Ross, thanks so much for the time, man. All right. Thanks, Aaron.